Hey guys, welcome back to Pillbox Movies. I'm Hank, and today we're going to be watching the 1979 French drama The Bronte Sisters or Les Sœurs Bronte. This film is directed by André Téchiné and stars uh, some of the most famous French actors of its time. It stars Isabelle Ajani as Emily Bronte, Marie-France Brisier as, as Charlotte Bronte, and uh, Isabelle Hubert as Anne Bronte. Uh, this is, I guess, in celebration of the release of Emily this year. Uh, I figured I'd watch another historical biopic um, depicting the, the the Bronte sisters. And before we get started, don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old, obscure, and art house films. I was actually contemplating, I, I just reread Wuthering Heights over the summer, and I was contemplating doing different adaptations of Wuthering Heights, different film adaptations of Wuthering Heights. Let me know if that's something that would be int of interest to you. Okay, perhaps describing the difficult living conditions of the Bronte sisters and their uh, surviving commu uh, surrounding community at the time. The siblings being painted in a <laughs> kind of severe, severe manner. That's that's Isabel. I recognize that face anywhere. Beautiful, beautiful Isabella Johnny. Oh, Patrick McGee! I didn't know he spoke French. That's the um the old man in A Clockwork Orange. I saw him in something else recently. I have no idea what. It was Pope Joan. I think he's being overdubbed, actually. Nous avons un artiste dans la famille. <laughs> of course, only the the uh, the brother is being highlighted as an artist within the family. Ooh! I like Ajani's wardrobe. Dressing up as a boy. Always the perfect look. Oh my god! I don't think I've seen Isabella Ajani in pants. Isabella Ajani in pants for a long, long time. Wow! It's a good look on her. I think it messes up her proportions a little, but I like the adventurousness of it. C'est un églantier. On l'appelle aussi rosier des chiens. Tu l'aimes, alors? Rosier des chiens. Non. Le où? Mais c'est une plante humble et triste et banale. Tu ne vois que l'apparence des choses. Triste et banale. Some descriptors of myself. Tu es fasciné en ce moment par le rosier tandis que le où sera toujours verdoyant. She likes the stalk work. Plants. L'amour qui n'a qu'un temps de floraison. Je le méprise et je le piétine. Je crache sur l'amour et sur sa vanité. I wasn't aware of this, but apparently some of the characteristics of Heathcliff in Withering. Oh my God! <laughs> oh Emily, such a Emily. Uh, some of the characteristics characteristics of Heathcliff in C'est l'amitié. In Withering Heights were based off of their brother, based off of uh, Bramwell. Il a un talent fou, une élégance. Who is that? He kind of looks like um, the the husband in Belle de Jour. Quelque chose qui émane de lui. Yeah, that's Jean Sorel. Un épanouissement qui frappe tout de suite. Ici, je n'oserais jamais solliciter un repas en votre compagnie, ni même un verre de bière. Vous manquez singulièrement d'audace. And we kind of already see uh, permeating throughout their interactions with the outside world the uh, how class kind of informs the behavior of the Bronte family. We see the humble vestments that Bromwell wears in comparison to the other men at the tavern. Mon talent ne peut pas s'épanouir si je ne suis pas reconnu, mais je deviendrai célèbre. And this is an interesting kind of approach in the story of celebrity or fame for this family that is all kind of funneled through uh, expectations for the son. While the sisters attend to general housework and editing and attending the needs of the others. 
I love these scenes of historical lighting. They do this a lot in Power of the Dog and Portrait of a Lady on Fire, for example, but also still walking. Um, rooms that are dominated by darkness, where light is kind of a rarity. And it's such a different design to a room uh, when we, we didn't have electrical lighting. It brings everybody together by a hearth and encourages different kind of familial interactions or social interactions. Oh, wow. What a beautiful image. Looking out at the looking out at the heath. Staring in through the windows like the ghost of Catherine Earnshaw. Bronwell looking at them, on them like Heathcliff. I love the image of her reading over um, uh, Jean Sorel's ca character, uh, Leyland's letter over and over again. It's that small kernel, the, the first kind of sign of hope or prospect entering into a young artist's life. and all of the kind of incumbent uh, joys and horrors that come with it. À ouvrir dans quatre ans d'ici, jour pour jour. Je me demande où nous serons, comment nous serons. That's a cool little production decision. They actually had them write it out in English. It's very nice. Just little signals of them wanting to keep it, like, historically, geographically accurate in their own little ways. m'a servi de mère pendant dix ans. J'ai veillé pendant deux nuits et assisté à des souffrances si abominables que je ne les souhaiterais pas à mon pire ennemi. J'ai écrit à Charlotte et à Anne quand on a su qu'il n'y avait plus rien à faire. Et elles, elles arriveront trop tard. Right, Keith <laughs> Vous n'allez rien manger Charlotte et Emily yeah, all of the graves, the tempest, the, the storm, the the sea, all these <laughs> very romantic images. Broadwell weeping over, uh, weeping over the grave like Heathcliff. I hope there's a scene like this in Emily. Qui a-t-il à dîner? Une dalle et un coq de bruyère. And in almost every iteration we see of a elderly woman in this, they're usually attending some sort of some sort of network. They're sewing or knitting or doing embroidery. Mademoiselle Bronte, je suis surpris de la façon dont vous avez coiffé ma fille. J'ai l'habitude de lui voir une triple tresse attachée avec des rubans. Ma chère, ma chère. Pause for a second. And again, in that short scene, we see like a, a bunch of displays as to the kind of societal expectations for what a woman should do. In in actual like three three stages or terms of their lives, we see the elderly matriarch um, attending embroidery, and uh, we see her castigated. We see her chastised for messing up the order, for not getting like a correct lunch to serve for the husband. We see we see Anne chastised for not uh, attending to the daughter's hair. Just all these kind of uh, different expectations as to how a woman should comport herself or conduct herself uh, based on the desires or whims of the of the man of the head of the household the patriarch monsieur bronte tout savant qui se prétend ne diffère de notre domesticité que par ce seul détail et le taux de ses émoluments so we see demands made along the lines of of gender of sex, but as well uh, on the lines of class. 
Monsieur Robinson. Monsieur Robinson est un homme dur, un homme orgueilleux qui songe moins à Dieu et à ses proches qu'à sa position dans le monde. Je tenais à vous dire que je ne vous ai jamais considéré comme un domestique, monsieur. Oh, really? Let's take this a little further. C'est d'un goût, on ne peut plus douter. Assez. Je ne pourrais pas supporter longtemps ces affaires. Oh, 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 oh. Jesus. Oh, Jesus. It's got hot eyes. Cadeau le mouton, mon cher. It just uh, framing the husband, Mr. Robinson, just at a, a little further distance, making him seem so much like colder and more isolated. And also like, um, like petty in a way. You see how the, uh, the, the feminine characters, the female characters are framed a little bit closer. They're a little bit warmer. They seem more approachable. The wife is, at, uh, like in a middle distance, um, kind of between the lengths of the, the shot of, of Anne and of the daughter and the length of the shot of the husband. Le mouton est trop cuit. Remportez-le et dites-le à la cuisine. And he's just off at a little bit of a distance. Oh. Pas de velours. Oeil d'ambre. Pourquoi M. Bonté est-il tout rouge? Taisez-vous, impertinente. Mes enfants ne doivent pas parler à table. And we don't get to see uh, Bronwell throughout this entire thing. Qu'y a-t-il, M. Bronté? Vous when they're having a fight about him. Je suis un peu près de la cheminée, mais ce n'est pas autrement gênant. Oh, God. J'espère que vous nous reviendrez vite. Je souhaite à votre mari un prompt rétablissement, Lydia. Madame Robinson. Whoops. Que ce n'est rien de grave. Il a très souvent des malaises à l'époque des grandes vacances ou des fêtes. Certaines personnes ne supportent pas l'atmosphère de joie qui règne alors. Mais il sera certainement sur pied dans la journée, je le souhaite comme vous. In her own small, small, small acting way, I like how very, very slightly restless uh, Isabelle Hubert is as Anne. She's just, in a very minimal way, kind of shuffling back and forth. A bientôt. Juge pas, petite sœur. Tu ne sais rien de la vie. Toi et tes sœurs, vous avez été élevés comme des pommes de terre dans une cave. Wow. Vous ne savez pas ce que c'est. Brownwell, come on. Vos yeux sont creusés. Vous avez un visage d'insomniaque. Ah, oh. not the best words for a girl who's crushing on you. Oh. Is Monsieur uh, Asia? It, like a, a prototype for Mr. Rochester. I guess that makes sense. He's an older guy. Je ferai ce que vous me direz, monsieur. Vous êtes le maître. Je suis votre élève. Oh, yeah, I, 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 you see a little bit of Rochester in here, I guess. Qu'est-ce que vous me chantez là? Her hair is all the way down now. That's your time, boy. Go and get it. Il a déjà eu quatre attaques successives depuis, et le docteur m'a fait comprendre que la prochaine pouvait lui être fatale. Sounds like a good thing. Mais il peut survivre. Pendant des années, survivre, en m'appelant sans cesse à son chevet. C'est un espoir. Et je suis contraint de m'y raccrocher. It's very, 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 very subtle, but it, the transformation uh, uh, of... Um... Bronwell that has occurred over this film uh, very very subtly over these years from the kind of bookish timid person at the beginning of this into uh, he's not like overbearing about it but he's very kind of forceful and um, self-determined at this point of the film and uh, this point of his history I guess this is just the effects of taking glasses off of a guy just the three women's Madame! prospects getting worse and worse and worse. Them having to cling to a life of poverty and smallness. And under these miserly conditions, write some of the great works of English literature. Il est mort. Monsieur Robinson est mort. Ça va changer toute ma vie. Il est mort. Nous sommes libres. What a terrible thing to be celebrating. Oh my god. 
he really has like main character syndrome, just flitting in and out of this house, expecting his sisters to attend to his every needs and uh, dote on his triumphs and successes. It's it's in a kind of in a fun way how like intentional this movie is how frustrating this movie chooses to be uh, by centering a lot of it around Bronwell's story and we really don't get to see a lot of the sisters and when we do see them they're not very active or don't have a lot of agency within their own stories and so it becomes a, a, a kind of fr- piece of frustration that we share with the sisters in their own kind of interior lives that they have to bear witness to these. Um, um, to these wild flights and um, emotional stories that are occurring to other people. Un testament imprévu m'oblige à choisir entre mon cœur et ma fortune. Ne cherchez en aucune façon à me revoir. Like we haven't seen. Uh, we haven't seen Emily in forever. I, I think it's actually really fun how intentionally frustrating this movie is to center itself so much around Broadwell's life. <laughs> oh, <laughs> I think that's cheeky as hell. It's not even slightly trying to disguise this as, like, how interesting the sisters' lives are, and how many prospects they have, and how many twists and turns their lives lead. They lead a drudgery of a life. And it it, it informs on such a kind of beautiful characterization that uh, within them is such a... We, we as an audience know that within them is such a complex and torrential and 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 powerful emotional life. And we get to see none of it enacted out in their real life dealings. It's the opposite of uh, a regular biopic that usually tries to extravagant and ex- um, externalize the kind of interior thought processes of it or the interior kind of revelations of its characters, of its subjects. Like, uh, he's gonna blot out his own fucking face. And instead, uh, we see <laughs> in this movie just this a steady accumulation of disappointments. Some not even that informative, but creating a whole kind of atmosphere around um, around these women that would inform their worldview. Their brother's chaotic life, their lack of prospects, the Catholic question their uh, domestic duties, their uh, the constant reinforcements from various people in their lives that they should become teachers or governesses. Tu me laisses entrer, insupportable tête de mule. Il faut que ce soit publié, espèce de sac. Jamais, jamais, jamais. Je te hais. <laughs> I mean, that is siblings. I love that this moment of crisis, this breaking, this tearing apart of the, of the sister's bonds, is over such a small thing, uh, comparatively small, in like the, the world of like cinema and stuff, it's over just the publishing of a poem. It's not even like saying, like, uh, you need to devote your life to this, you need to turn your life around, you need to take this direction fully. It's just the publishing of this poem, but because the sisters live under such constraints, uh, because their lives are uh, kind of wrapped around so many um, aspects of duty and uh, survival, survival and uh, like inability to self-determine, uh, something as small as publishing a poem or submitting a poem to be published seems like them a massive overstep and worthy of condemnation and tearing the sisters apart. God! 
bad thumbnail. Ah, Emily! Oh God! Just a cheap ass house. Jesus Christ. The painting's kind of prophetic, sadly. Ronwell doesn't know that he'll relatively be erased from history in comparison to his sisters. Oh, and they're editing for each other. <laughs> Stupid how fast they can read. And we have it. A conspiracy of Brontes. Oh, what a beautiful image. Oh, so good. <laughs> oh, God. Who are the Bell brothers? I know it doesn't really work out this way, but I really would love for them to, to ga gain fame, fame and fortune after such a withering first act, after having to go through so much and live such small lives. I can't believe they all published within one year. Good for them. What a great bunch of sisters. La seule idée de ce voyage me fait trembler de la tête aux pieds. He's wearing the same suit, the same garbs that he wore when he was trying to, like, make an impression with Mrs. Robinson. It's a good kind of costume um, decision that his clothing really hasn't changed over these past few years. God, he does not look well. Jean Sorel is not impressed. He's gone full circle. He was diminutive and timid the first time they met, and he circled back around after finding his manhood, finding his presence. He's, the the drugs have taken him all the way back. God. He looks like Pennywise. <laughs> the sisters have to wait outside. Oh God, even with their newfound fame, their anonymous fame, but their newfound fame, they're still relegated to waiting outside while their brother is able to conduct business. God, so pitiable. I feel so bad for Emily. I feel bad for all three of them. They've really focused more on Bronwell's relationship with Anne, so I was wondering when they would, like... Because there's so few scenes between Bronwell and Emily that you kind of wonder where the inspiration for Heathcliff came from. But these few scenes, and, like, the scene with her uh, comforting him at the grave, um, they really give you... A, a sense, a kind of in a um, circuitous way, a sense of what their relationship is. Ah, oh, his still scorched up room, Jesus. Ah, oh, with his own mouth open. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. He died wasting away, still hungering. Mademoiselle, pardonnez-moi. Dans la mesure où, où l'on peut être de quelque réconfort pour une sœur qui vient de perdre son frère. Je vous remercie like infiniment, M. Nichols. L'Amérique ne vaut pas mieux que l'Angleterre. Écoute ça. <laughs> L'auteur des hauts de Hurlevent semble croire que la perversité de l'esprit humain est <laughs> de la somme de la férocité animale. Oh. You know, Il a donc choisi les traits les plus frappants du first print reviews aren't everything. Du et du chat sauvage. Oh, and this is particularly incisive um, because she based this character in part on her brother. And so hearing this um, dismissal of the character while she's cleaning her dead brother's room is uh, stings that much more. Yeah, where is Jacket? In whatever small way that may be you doing honor to him, remembering him. It's 
they've really, really subtly gone about portraying the relationship between uh, Emily and Bronwell. It is one of the more subtle and yet forceful and um, rich depictions, character relationships that have, has been built across this film. Very sorrowful, particular depiction of grief. Like the subject of um, an act of killing, uh, burping at the end of the movie when he can't mask his guilt over all of the murders and atrocities he committed. In a way, I think it speaks to the creativity, the kind of artistic mind of Isabella Gianni, that she can bring such forceful presentations of a character to life. So many dumb ways to undo some of the most creative, powerful minds of English literature. Vous le sentez en permanence? Undoing them with work. Ici. Undoing them with sickness. Undoing them with poverty. Just such a shame. It's such a fucking shame. I can't even imagine how the 2022 movie is going to handle this. It's such a fucking shame. I think it's like within the course of a year, both of them die. 29 and 30 years old. It's such a fucking shame. It's such a sadness how much like uh, sickness informs their work. It is pervasive throughout Withering Heights and Jane Eyre. I mean, it's common like literary trope, but still. Uh, given the conditions of their of their lifestyle of their class like it's just such a shame moi je crois que nous serons partis tous ensemble quelque part je ne sais pas wow it's going back all the way to before they went to brussels emily hates to see jamais vu la mer j'aimerais bien la voir un jour in a small way, I love these kind of um, auditory cues for when they have a flashback or when they're thinking about something. They, they use the sounds of nature a lot. There's the sound of the coursing water. There's the sounds of um, the wind blowing on the heath in another scene. Oh. Just the blackness. Go back home. Stay by the fire. Anne, please, do not hold a mirror up to her breath. Oh no. It's such a shame. So many deaths in this family over such a short period of time. Three deaths within like a few years. Like two years. La vie est trop courte pour l'art. Hmm. Il nous faudrait beaucoup plus de temps pour sentiment. durcir notre coquille. It's such a different depiction uh, from 
the first scene of the movie where there was just one hearth where they were all gathered around and now there's just flames lighting up all of London and it's used in such excess and everything is kind of lit up and um, impersonal and divided and um, urbane. So she does have that quality of success that we've been dreaming of for these sisters since this movie began, but she's long since separated from the family that we wished uh, she had retained. Yeah, all these flames. This flame that used to be so delicate and so familiar and so personal has become... Um, impersonal and unfamiliar. Monsieur Thackeray, vous invite à partager sa large. Je vous remercie. Allons. I think this is meant to be a happy ending, but it's also just like such a shame. Uh, an ending with an image of the uh, flame and of the sunset. I wonder if that's actually like a, um, a Turner piece. Le où? C'est l'amitié, et il durera jusqu'à notre hiver. Mais c'est une plante humble et triste et banale. Roland Bart was in this, huh? Interesting. Uh, a little bit of goss from from the production. Apparently, Hubert and Jani did not. Um, get along with each other during the production. That's interesting. Yeah, really just a fucking shame about their lives. Do they all die of tuberculosis? Yeah, and... Goddamn, Charlotte Bronte would die in, 19, or in 1855 from... Per, what is believed to be complications from pregnancy. Oh. I want to re read Viet. That sounds interesting. Oh... Wow, I had no idea this portrait of the Bronte siblings was real. That's insane. And he actually did, like, paint himself out. And then, and Mrs. Robinson, his, uh, his, the woman he had the affair with was actually the inspiration for Mrs. Robinson in The Graduate. That's really cool. Oh, man. Yeah, just a, such a shitty way for the artistic and also actual lives of the, this family, of these siblings, to uh, be curtailed just for reasons of class, uh, susceptible, susceptible to afflictions of health, afflictions of time. Uh, they have to uh, try and make money however they can. They have to work as governesses or te and teach or babysit and just not enough time devoted to the things I actually cared about. I have no idea how the 2022 movie is going to interpret these events. I don't think there's anything particularly um, like dramatic in a like in a fun way <coughs> to portray about these uh these sisters' lives, it, it doesn't seem like it would be, like, fun in a TikTok-ish kind of way. Hey, I just wanted to say a brief thing regarding uh, the upcoming Emily movie. Um, of course, I initially tracked down Bronte sisters, Les Sœurs Bronte, uh, so Les Sœurs Bronte, uh, because I saw that Emily would maybe be a not good movie and wanted to watch something in response to that. But having done a little bit more research on the production itself and the people involved, it seems like Emily is probably going to be um, a pretty good movie, uh, a, a pretty all right movie, or at least not the cynical cra uh, the cynical cash grab that its marketing has um, portrayed it to be. Like setting aside some historical inaccuracies, perhaps the... Uh, existence of a male uh, romantic lead that may not have existed IRL, hair and makeup decisions, and of course the overall marketing scheme of the movie. Um, it, it's not like it's a, an actual like Netflix movie that was created. It was previously developed and shot by Frances O'Connor, who is... She's a pretty good 
she's a pretty good actress and and this was her directorial debut so i don't want to knock um emily necessarily whether or not it turns out to be good or bad uh it's not it's not like a cynical cash grab and it's not like a girl bossification of the bronte sisters i just wanted to put that out there or at least i hope it's not but who knows maybe they'll try the route of portraying it with gravitas uh i doubt it but we'll see yeah uh, anyways that was uh les Sœurs bronte the sisters the bronte sisters have you seen this movie let me know what you think i'll leave a comment down below and don't forget to click the like button and subscribe for more old obscure and art house films and until next time keep watching good movies and listen to a bronte audiobook if you can or not listen to an Anne one Justice for Ad.